Hello everyone, welcome back to Full Grown Gaming's Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. I believe we are in the green room, we did a little bit of stuff in the last episode with this room, but in this episode we are going to be progressing through the hotel and eventually back out to Traverse Town. If we try and leave though, it's dangerous out there, don't wander off. Leon being his classic emo self, we can't do anything, apparently he's a fatherly figure now. But up here, the, the clock above Leon, you wouldn't think to do anything with it probably, but I believe if you hit it... Is this going to turn out like that fan back in that one episode? Apparently you can't hit it from that side, but I know for a fact you can hit it from this side, so I think we have to make it 7 o'clock. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. Alright guys, I finally made it 6 o'clock, or wait, 7 o'clock, yeah, it took long enough it seemed like. Now if we open this, is there a mithril or an elixir or something here? Mithril, uh, I always get those mixed up in this game for some reason. But I believe when we talk to Leon we're going to get a cutscene. Sooner or later the Heartless will find you. You'd best prepare yourself. Prepare myself to fight for your life. Are you ready? I'm ready, so let's go ahead and watch this cutscene. Let's go. Don't bother with the small fry. Find the leader. Let's go. Now, Leon's not really gonna- actually, I'm not gonna call him Leon. I know him as Squall. I know his name is Leon, but apparently, you know... Uh, Alright, so, Eris's name was originally supposed to be Aerith, according to, like, the translation or something like that. Apparently, even in Final Fantasy VII, her name was mistranslated, so that's kind of a... When I played this game and saw Aerith, I was like, what in the world did they, like, mistranslate for this game? And apparently it was a mistranslation in the first game. Now, what Leon... Uh, Squall... Wait, no, Leon! Yeah, that's right, I was gonna say, I forgot what his name is in this game. But we have to go back to, or we don't even necessarily have to come back here, but what he wants us to do is find the leader of the, the Heartless over here. But over here we can actually finally open, I'm not sure if I showed this actually, we can open it now though. And apparently there's a postcard in there. Now before we were not able to open that, I'm not really, I'm not entirely sure why not. But even though the Moogle is gone, we still can't go in the shop. And that huge guy in those barrels that was blocking this area right here are gone. Meaning that we can kind of use this as a... A shortcut to get back up there. It doesn't save too much time, but I guess anything is, you know, something. If we come back and talk to Aerith... So you're the Keyblade Master. Please be careful. We got a Mega Potion, so I don't think a lot of people probably know that you can come back and get a Mega Potion from her. And I don't think there is any- Well, we might as well go ahead and mail a couple postcards. I think I've got a couple stocked up. Third postcard, we get a Mega Potion. We just got one of those from Aerith. Aerith. Fourth, post fourth postcard, we get a Mega Ether. Now, yeah, apparently that's all we have right now. I'm not going to talk to Yuffie over there, not really a big fan of Yuffie. She did steal our materia way back in Final Fantasy VII. And another thing that I want to talk about is the fact that Leon, I think in this game, is 25 years old. And in Final Fantasy VIII, he was like 17, 18, something like that. So the whole aging mechanic in this game is weird. I, like I said, I know this game isn't canon to any of the other games, but it is just kind of weird how everyone is a different age and all that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and level up. I think I'm, yeah, level 7. I want to get to level 9, just because I want to show you guys what happens when you get an ability. There we go, guys. Finally got to level 9. I'm not even going to worry about them anymore. Might as well go through the Dalmatian's house. Why not? And another thing that I forgot to mention before is that I... Apparently, can I not go into my menu while I'm in the house? Really? I guess I'll meet you guys back over there where I can go into the menu. Alright, maybe now- there we go. I'm not sure why you can't go into your menus in the Dalmatian's house, but anyway, we can equip guard now. Which, as it says down there, we can guard against enemy attacks by pressing the square button. Now, you can see that there's an AP value to the right of each ability, and down there at the bottom, there is a number slash a number. That what number on the right is how much total AP we have, and the number on the left, obviously, is how much we have remaining. Each ability in the game takes a certain amount of AP to equip, and I don't think that you can ever really equip all of your abilities at once, so it kind of adds a little bit of strategy to, strategy to the game. Now, the equipment. Can't believe I've been forgetting to equip these protect chains that I've been having, you know, burning holes in my pocket since how, who knows how long. 
But now that I've done all that, I'm not even going to bother with these guys anymore. I'm going to go straight to sec- not Sector 3, what is this, Final Fantasy? Uh, what is it called? District 3, or the third district, or something like that. Where we will be fighting our first real boss in the game. I know we fought Darkseid. I believe that's what his name was, Darkseid, or something like that. And then we fought, not Riku, we fought Leon, but none of those were really as hard as the boss we're about to fight. Gorge, are these the heartless guys? Let's go get them! Now the first part of this is really just to go ahead and take out the soldiers. By the way, I don't think I introduced this enemy to you guys. Obviously now we have party members. We have Donald and Goofy who are pretty much our only party members throughout the game. Or only permanent party members. You do get like every time you go to a world you'll get, you know, a party member usually from that world. But now these enemies are called soldiers, which is kind of like the next highest up level from the basic shadows or whatever. And obviously you can tell they take a little bit more HP. And here we have Guard Armor, is I believe this boss's name. And I don't think, I think the only way in the game that you can tell, like, what an enemy's name is, is through a journal that we'll be getting later on. That basically every time you encounter an enemy, a character, I don't want to spoil necessarily who it is yet, will write it in the journal. And you might, obviously, a lot of you guys have probably played the game before, so you'll know. But as far as this boss goes, really the only thing that I like to do, like, the only thing I've ever done, is go for his arms first. Because obviously, you saw, like, the first, he's doing it right now. The first attack he uses in the game, or what am I, the strongest attack he uses is when he does that arm spinning thing. Obviously, if you take out his arms, he can't do that anymore. And I always remember this boss being a little bit harder than this. I don't remember his arms getting taken out that fast. Like, I already took out his left arm. There goes his right arm. And then his feet are really just a matter of wearing down at him. Obviously, the ones that are in the air, you know, the parts of him that are in the air, like his torso and his arms are going to be a little bit harder to hit. And that's really another reason why you would probably want to go ahead and take out his arms. But, as like I said, as far as his feet go, they might be a little bit more powerful, like, per attack. But it's a little bit harder, I think, to get hit by the feet. And also, like... Yeah, I was gonna say it's easier to dodge, harder to hit. I mean, it's not too hard overall as a boss fight. Now, the torso, obviously, you can see he's going crazy. I think it would've been cool if, like, the head was an extra part that you have to fight too, but not so. Now, I believe in Chain of Memories, you actually have to fight this boss too. If you guys, by the way, I mean... I don't want to spoil anything that happens in Chain of Memories or any of the other games, really. But if you guys have never played Chain of Memories, I would say give it a shot, because a lot of people didn't like it because of the card mechanic. And if you don't know, I'm not going to go into detail about it or anything, but I thought it was a pretty cool mechanic. Now, I don't know why I got into a Chain of Memories argument, not argument, but rant, almost. Anti-rant, really, but that is all there is to guard armor, so let's go ahead and watch this cutscene. So, you were looking for me? Uh -huh. They too have been seeking the wielder of the Keyblade. Hey, why don't you come with us? We can go to other worlds on our vessel. I wonder if I could find Riku and Kairi. Of course! Are you sure? Who knows? But we need them to come with us to help us find the king. Sora, go with them. Especially if you want to find your friends. Yeah, I guess. But you can't come along looking like that. Understand? Ooh. No fighting, no sad face, okay? 
Yeah, you gotta look funny, like us. <laughs> yep. Whoa. Yes, but ones like happy faces. Happy? Cue the countdown to the most awkward scene in the game. <laughs> That's one funny face. Okay, why not? I'll go with you guys. Name's Goofy. I'm Sora. All for one, one for all. That little squirt took down that heartless. Who'd have thought it? Such is the power of the Keyblade. The child's strength is not his own. Why don't we turn him into a heartless? <laughs> That'll settle things quick enough. And the brat's friends are the king's lackeys. Swap on the ice, they're all built traps by the look of them. You're no prize yourself. <laughs> Shut up! Enough! The Keyblade has chosen him. Will it be he who conquers the darkness? Or will the darkness swallow him? Either way, he could be quite useful. Make sure you're prepared for the journey ahead of you. We don't know how far the Heartless have spread. Check out the shops here, they've got some pretty neat stuff. This is from all of us. Now, this prize, or this gift, is one of the best ones we could have ever hoped for. 100 money. And that is pretty funny, I'll show you why in a second. Spend it as I see fit, that's like giving a kid a penny and telling me not to spend it all in one place. And apparently, because we beat Leon before, we're going to get an elixir. And you can see he's kind of mad in the background there. Good luck. I hope you find your friends. Look out for each other. Keep your spirits up. Alright, so now we've got a little bit of a, kind of like tutorials to go here. The g gummy ship is outside that gate. I'm not going to read word for word the tutorials because that would just be obnoxious, but basically we can warp to the gummy ship, which we haven't really seen too much of yet, from save spots. Except not all save spots let you do that. And obviously Sora doesn't know what the gummy ship is. I think we actually have to go through another tutorial regarding the gummy ships in a second. Or not now, I'm going to wait till the next episode to do that. And I might even speed that up because that's also pretty obnoxious. But, luckily Donald actually gives us our first magic spell, which is fire. And I'm going to show you guys how to equip, you know, quick equip all that later. Now we can use magic too, that's actually pretty useful. Not The thing is, I'm going to explain also magic in a second as well. And Goofy also gives us dodge roll, which is another ability. So I think, by the way, if we hadn't got the guard ability, we could basically, this would be our first introduction to the ability system. Are we gonna be- Oh, Jiminy! By the way, Jiminy, I forgot about him. He's the one that actually has the journal from before I was talking about. But, let me go ahead and show you the journal. That option wasn't here, by the way, until we got Jiminy in the- Not really in the party, but, you know, as a- an ally. But characters, I believe, yep, the Heartless, the Guard Armor. It even gives you a picture and everything. I always thought the journal, you know, system was actually kind of cool. Because you can go back through and see what all of them were called. Like a bio of everything. And over here, hey, look at this mark! That is a blue trinity symbol, and there are different colors of trinities in the game. And I think I might have mentioned these before, but now that we have Donald, Goofy, and... Sora, we already had Sora, I was gonna say, who am I missing? Obviously the main character. But whatever these do, some do different things. This one teleports us up here, where we can get, I believe there's a postcard in this treasure chest. Let me see. Yeah, postcard. So, the trinities, like, I, I think I might have mentioned this in the last episode or whatever, but I think there are only a few that are missable. And I think that I they fixed that in Final Mix, you know, which is a Japanese-only thing, to where I think none of them are, none of them are missable. So I'll be trying to get those throughout the game. Now watch this. Remember those 100 money? That 100 money we got earlier? Pretty sure this is going to add up to more than 100 money by the time I collect all of it. And another thing, we don't have the ability. All right, let's see how high this goes. 
83? Oh, wow, that's not as much as I thought it was going to be, but it was almost 100, and all we had to do was jump on the ground over there. But we don't have the ability to attract items yet. Basically, if we get close to them, we, we actually have to touch them. We can't just get close to them. Later in the game, I think we get an ability to where it's basically... I think it might even be called, like, Treasure Magnet or something like that. That'll actually help as far as getting, you know, items and stuff without actually having to go touch them. And another thing, I think... If Donald and Goofy touch an item, I think it collects it as well, so that's actually kind of useful. Now, I believe there is a red room that I need to go in down here. Or, you know, maybe this isn't red, maybe this is like black or something, I I've never been too good with colors. But there should be- there it is, a treasure chest. What's in here? I actually don't know. Pretty stone, so that is the second of two pretty stones you can get outside of, you know, Destiny Islands. I was about to say Traverse Town, but that is actually where we are right now. So I'm going to go ahead- actually, you know what, I was going to say I'm going to go to District 3, and I am. But I'm going to show you a different way to get there, and the way that I go, actually, you get a whole bunch of extra items and stuff like that. And we actually have to go through the gizmo shop and up that ladder. If you guys remember in the last episode, I showed you that ladder that was up against the wall. Obviously not there anymore. Someone, while we were fighting the guard armor, took it upon themselves to put it on this wall over here. And apparently doing that made it more stable. Not sure exactly how that makes sense. Maybe... Since these hooks are on the top, I don't know, it's more stable. I'm trying to make sense out of a Disney and Square game. But what that does is allow us to come up here, and over there to the left, whoa, about to fall off, there's a red trinity, I think, over here. Somewhere. Yep, red trinity, you can kind of see it down there in that crack. We can't do red trinities yet. We'll actually have to wait till later in the game to unlock the other trinities and stuff. But another thing, on top of that tower there, is actually pretty important later in the game. Now, there should be a treasure chest over here on top of these roofs somewhere. There it is. Not sure what's in here either, probably like a mithril shard or something. How do I know that? Like, I don't think I've ever gotten that treasure chest, I guess it was just a guess. But what this does up here is allow us to come up here, you know, on top of the third district. Obviously the only way to get up here as far as I know, and I think this might have been where Go Donald and Goofy were in that cutscene. But if we come over here, I think there's a postcard, yep, postcard. I think that's all I have to do up there, so might as well jump down. If we interact with this key on the wall here, or keyhole, the doors like flap open and I didn't think it did anything the first time I played the game. But now I realize what that actually did was allow you to just go straight from the first to the third district without actually having to go all the way around through the second district. So that's a pretty cool shortcut there. And I think this is the third blue trinity we've got. So there should be one more for me to get somewhere. I think it might be in a in an area where I'm about to where I am about to go. And there are, I believe, 17 blue trinities, so I hopefully I can get them all before the end of the game. Now, what in the world should we do here? There's a door with a fire symbol on it, and we just learned the fire spell. Fire! That's right, all you have to do is cast, you know, fire on that door and it'll open. Now, this area here, I thought this area was actually pretty cool as a kid. Not really sure why, I mean, it's not any more special than anything else. But these rocks on the, you know, floating here actually move. And this kind of reminds me of the Ice Cavern, trying to get into the Ice Cavern in Ocarina of Time. Except if you fall off of one of these, you pretty much have to go back to the beginning over there. Because I don't think you can latch onto any of these, or grab onto any of them, I should say. Now, I think there's actually a Yellow Trinity over here somewhere. Yeah, there's the Yellow Trinity. I'm not sure if you can get that treasure chest over there, by the way. I think that might be what that Yellow Trinity is for. It's been a long, long time since I've done that. But as soon as we go this wall here, I think there might be another cutscene. This musty place. It reminds me of the secret place back home where we used to scribble on the walls. Remember? Kyrie? Squirrel? You guys don't know how, like, heartbroken I was. I was like, yes, finally found Kyrie. Well, no. Well, well. You arrived sooner than I expected. You knew we were coming? Of course. Are you a heartless? Sora, come on. Does he even remotely look like a heartless? Exactly, Donald. You know what I'm trying to say here. Oh my, no. My name is Merlin. As you can see, I'm a sorcerer. I spend much of my time traveling. It's good to be home. Your king has requested my help. King Mickey? Yes, indeed. Donald Goofy. And who might you be, young man? I'm Sora. 
Ah, so you have found the key. I didn't really find it, I just kind of like happened to... I guess that's the same thing as finding it, happening across it. What did the king ask you to do? Just a moment. Presto! And just like that, it's a fully furnished house. There now. Ahem. Your king asked me to train you in the art of magic. We can start anytime you like. Let me know when you're ready to begin the training. Oh, and one more thing. Hello, I'm the Fairy Godmother. Your king asked me to help too. I will assist you throughout the journey. That was really not what she just said, but pretty close. I do not know how much I can be of help, but do stop by any time. Alright, so we can come in here to train our magic, and by that it really means if we talk to him we can go upstairs somehow, and basically we have unlimited magic where we can just test out the magic or whatever, but I never really found that feature all that useful. But here is another trinity, I think this might just give us a whole bunch of money. Yep, yeah. oh and a mega ether apparently, so those trinities, but like obviously there are things that you... Anything that's hidden in most games, if you try and, you know, collect all of them, you're probably going to get rewarded. So I think, I'm trying to remember, I think that might be everything that we need to get. Yeah, it is, basically. Actually, no, one more thing, almost forgot. I'm going to go back to the first district and try and mail all these postcards. And here we are back in the first district, so let's see what we get from mailing those things. Fifth postcard, we get a mithril. Sixth postcard, we get an elixir. I think that's all we have. Yep, no more mail card option. Now, I think that is everything we can get up to this point in Traverse Town. I'm probably forgetting something obvious. And off camera, well, no, I'll do that at the beginning of the next episode, I guess. I was going to say, I need to buy some accessories for, for Donald and Goofy. But as far as this episode, guys, I want to thank you for watching it. And I want to see you guys back for the next episode, where we actually get to delve into the world of gummy ships.